Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make this 80 pound pistol crossbow with a 5 shot magazine that is fed from below the barrel. Today is going to be the how to tutorial but the shooting video was uploaded last weekend and will be linked in the video description down below. So let's get started. Firstly you need to go to the link in the description of this video which will take you to a page on my website where you can find these blueprints here. You can also find all of these different parts with inches, sizes and centimetres sizes. So as you can see I am using three different materials on this build. 9mm plywood here and 3mm aluminium for the outer body which is going to create the strength and also 4mm aluminium for some of the parts which need even more strength. The first thing which I'm going to do is cut out the main parts of the body from the aluminium. So this is a 3mm aluminium which I'm going to be using and I've got all of the parts laid out onto it in such a way that they all fit on and now I'm going to be gluing them down using Pritt stick and then I can cut them out. So the first thing to do for cutting out the metal is since this is such a large sheet I'm going to divide it up into two halves so I'm just going to take my regular large hacksaw and cut all the way down here. You can pretty much use any saw that can cut out metal as long as it can cut out aluminium. I don't think that you could use an angle grinder because the aluminium is bad for the grinding wheels. Now that it's been cut into two separate halves like this, I'm just going to start with the smallest part on this half, which is the two trigger mechanism parts. So to cut out the trigger mechanism part, I'm going to be using a hacksaw with an 18 teeth per inch blade, which is good for cutting out aluminium. I then divide the trigger mechanism into separate parts and then cut it out and refine it using the hacksaw again. So this is what the two parts of the trigger mechanism looks like once I've roughly cut them out just using the hacksaw. And as you can see, there's a massive bird edge on the back and they're not that accurate to the lines. So what I'm going to do now is take a metal file like this and I'm going to file it to within one or two millimeters of the lines. The reason that I don't file the trigger mechanism so that it's exact to the outline of the template is so that when I laminate the pieces together there's still going to be a slight room for error. So this is what the two trigger mechanism parts look like once I've cut them out and refined down the shape and I'm just going to put them aside for now because they were basically just two tasters to get back into working with metal and now I'm going to be spending the rest of this time cutting out the whole of this metal piece and I probably won't go back to these trigger mechanism parts until I've finished out cutting all of the metal. So for cutting out these metal sheets it would be much easier I think if you used a jigsaw with a sharp metal cutting blade but I wanted to try cutting out these larger pieces using a hacksaw just so that you could see it was possible to do it without expensive power tools. So basically to cut out all of these sheets I just started off by using the hacksaw to remove all of the larger pieces of metal and then I refined them down to within 1 or 2 millimeters of the outline of the template by using regular metal files. So as you can see using my drill press I drilled two 10mm holes straight through the aluminium here. You could have also used a regular drill for this. Now the reason for doing this is because I'm then going to use my jigsaw here to cut all the way across here and I can just insert the metal cutting blade into the holes like this. I'm then going to use my hacksaw to cut both of these lines and then I can take out this whole metal section and use it for another product project. The reason that I couldn't just use my hacksaw to cut straight across this middle section is because it doesn't have the reach to cut all the way across. So now I'm going to just be using my jigsaw to cut the line along. So now this line's been cut, I can then continue refining the shape of all of these parts. So 
So this is what it looks like once I've cut it out even further and I've basically refined all of the outside shape. These bits which I've highlighted in black are the other parts which I need to cut out and this part is the slot in the barrel for the string to pass through. This part is part of the magazine mechanism and here is where I'm going to put my finger in to be the trigger mechanism like this. So to get into these interior cut parts here, what I'm going to be doing is using my drill press to drill adequate size holes in the different spaces where I can cut them out. So I've drilled these two holes here and three holes down here. I'm now going to take a file and enlarge them enough so that I can fit in the hacksaw blade. So this is what the slot looks like after I've cut it using the file and the hacksaw. Now I'm going to cut these two slots up here which are going to be for the loading mechanism and I'm also going to cut this circle in here. Now these two slots have been cut, as you can see I didn't cut them all the way up to the top because I thought cutting them all the way up to this would take away too much strength. But now that they've been cut I'm going to now take my draw press drill holes in all four corners here so they'll be much easier to cut out this middle section. So I've cut these four holes just using a 10mm drill bit. Now I'm just going to use hacksaw and files to connect them all up, take out the middle part and then file all of the edges. So this is what it looks like once I've cut out the trigger mechanism part and this piece is pretty much finished now. There's nothing else that I can do to it until I then go and cut out this again. That's right, I've got to cut out this whole entire piece again out of aluminium on top of these two other pieces. So I might as well now get started on cutting out this piece. 10mm holes have now been drilled in all of the necessary areas that I need to drill them in so that I can then cut it out using the jigsaw. Now the rest of the shaping is done with a hacksaw and hand files. So now both of these pieces are cut out, now it's time to cut out some of the plywood which is going to go in between them. So these all three of the plywood parts which need to go on the front part, I haven't got the part which is going to go on the back part yet because I'm going to cut that out later. And these are going to be cut out of 9mm birch multiplex plywood which has got many many layers. I'm going to cut them out using my scroll saw which has got a very thin cutting blade on. So I just cut this piece out but then I realised uh, when I was planning out, this piece was actually meant to extend along and up to here, but that doesn't really matter, this piece isn't very structural, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut off this extra section here out of more plywood, and it'll just be in two parts instead of one. So this is what all of the pieces look like once I've cut them out of the plywood. Now I've got to remove all of the paper and get ready to glue them down. But before I glue them down, I've got to get the trigger mechanism ready to use, and as you can see here, I've got these two aluminium pieces which I cut out right at the start and then I've got a piece of 3mm plywood and just I can sandwich it in between and now I'm going to glue all of these together and then file it down and the trigger mechanism will be fully assembled. I then clamp it in the vise and it looks like this. So this is what it looks like once I've left it to set overnight and all of the layers are very solidly together and the glue is also very solid. So this is what the trigger mechanism looks like once it's done and all of these edges are flush with each other. Now I'm going to drill a 3.5mm hole straight through the middle here where a pin is going to be inserted. So once that's been done, I can then put a nail through, which is also 3.5mm wide, and that's going to act as a pin. I can then tighten this up in the vise to show you how it works. 
So as you can see, it's rotating on this pin now and pretend this is the string from the crossbow. It'll come back like this and I can pull it as hard as I like on it and it's gonna be like this and it just does not move at all. And then I can pull the trigger like this and then it'll fire. And because this is made of two layers of three millimeter aluminium, it's definitely not gonna break no matter what draw strength I put against it. So now it's time to start gluing together all of these middle parts of the body. But first, as you can see, there's lots of bits of paper left behind on here from the glue. And I need to get rid of that, otherwise the glue contact isn't going to be as strong as I'd like it to be. So I'm just going to run it under hot water. I then take a wire brush like this and any areas that are going to have pieces glued onto them. I'm then going to just rough them up so that the glue can adhere a bit better. So now I'm ready to glue on these pieces like this. So now everything's clamped up, I'm going to leave it to dry for a couple of hours at least. Now all of these parts are glued on on one side with the epoxy resin and it's gone dried now. And then you can see kind of where the trigger mechanism is going to come into. I'm going to drill this hole all the way through and it will pivot on this point like this. Very important that you give the trigger mechanism enough room to move. As you can see here, I used a rotary tool just to grind out a little area here into the wood so that then I could turn it like that all the way down. So now I've placed the trigger mechanism in a position where I can pivot it and as you can see it'll work well in this position if there was a pin all the way through. Then I've removed it and put a dot in the place where I want the pin to go. And it's very important that this dot is in line with the string path here. So now that this hole has been drilled, the pin can go through the trigger mechanism and then through this hole, just like this. As you can see, the trigger mechanism can now pivot just like it would normally. Once it's in like this, we can just check whether it works properly just by using a piece of string again, like this. And then you can just put it like that, pull on it. And if this doesn't move, then as you can see, the trigger mechanism is not moving and it's fine. Now just using wood rasp and metal files, I'm going to flatten down the wood so that it's flush with the metal, so there's no gaps in between them. So now all of this is pretty much ready for the next layer to be glued on, but before we do that we need to finish off the trigger mechanism. And to do that first I'm going to take some 600 grit sandpaper and smooth out the hook here because this is going to be where the string is going to catch on and we don't want there to be any abrasion between the string and the hook because then it will wear out the string very quickly. So this is what the trigger mechanism looks like once I've finished filing it and sanding it so that it's round. There are no raised edges that could catch inside the mechanism and it's very smooth and looks pretty nice. And also I've filed a groove in here just for a rubber band to attach. The reason that I filed a groove in there is so that this rubber band can attach and I'm going to drill a hole through here for it to go through so that when you pull the trigger it automatically returns. That makes it feel much better to pull and also when you cock back the mechanism like this then you don't want to have to be holding it back and then having to push the trigger in. You just want it, the string to push it down and then for it to click back up into place. So now I've drilled the hole all the way through here and I've just tied a piece of elastic on like this. Obviously in the final thing it's going to be a bit neater than this, but you could get the basic idea and then it just returns like that. So now it's time to glue on the other side of the aluminium frame, but to do that we need to mark the hole which has been drilled through here. So we need to line up exactly and once you line it up exactly I then took a centre punch and punched all the way through here and then I can just drill through where that mark is. So once that hole has been drilled this layer can just be slid on top like this and the pin can be put through and we can start to get a glimpse of what this is going to look like once it's been assembled. So I've now applied epoxy resin to the parts that need to be glued and I've clamped it all up. I made sure to not apply too much excess to the place where the trigger mechanism is in and of course you've got to have the trigger mechanism in here when you clamp it up because once the glue is set you can't open this up and there's no way to access the trigger mechanism from now on. So make sure that when you get to this stage it's done and I can still move the trigger mechanisms inside and I needed to make sure that there wasn't too much glue in here so that it doesn't leak in and then jam up the trigger mechanism because obviously that would completely ruin it. 
So this is what it looks like once both layers have been glued together. As you can see, I've still left the protective coating that comes on the outside of the sheet aluminium on because underneath that it's quite shiny and I want to not scratch it up too much because then it'll just make a lot of work for me in the future. And also, as you can see, the trigger mechanism is stuck in here and if we take out this pin, it still can't come out. So if we hadn't had it in when we glued all of this together, we'd not be able to use the crossbow because it wouldn't have a trigger. Thanks for watching guys, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you have please hit the like button down below and subscribe. If you did enjoy my video you might like some of my others and you can see previews of them here if you want to find out the full videos then go to my channel and check them out.